Okay, here we are watching a fairly standard Space Invaders type level. And you'll see that when I get hit, I go back to the start. Um, but that's about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a lives mechanism to this. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is when my player object, this is a new event, which is in the other menu, when the game starts. So not when the room starts, but when the game starts. So this will just happen once. But I'm going to set my lives to three. So I've got three lives. Of course, you can have as many lives as you want. Now, what I want to do is show those lives on the screen. So what I'm going to do is go into my projector object. If you don't know what a projector object is, it's something that has the draw function. And it actually makes itself invisible, but it will draw stuff on the screen. And I'm going to use this here, draw lives as an image. And I'm going to put them up in the top corner. And I'm going to use this sprite that I created earlier that's actually got a little bit of um, see-through transparent space around it. So that when they bunch together, they actually still look like separate objects. So I wonder if that will currently work. Let's give it a go. Okay, so there in fact are my three lives up in the corner of the screen. So that is absolutely excellent. Now, let's go and make some other things happen. Let's say that when an enemy bullet hits... Uh, me as the player object, uh, we've already got that, it jumps to the start position. Well, sure, it can still do that. But what I'm also going to do down here in the score section is I'm going to say, set your lives to minus one, but make it relative. So that means that when I get hit, it will drop by one. So let's have a quick look and make sure that that works and that we can see those little red lives disappearing. Okay, fantastic. There they are. And as I get hit, they disappear. So when they go down to zero. Now, you might have noticed that I've got no lives, but I'm still alive. Well, that's because this thing doesn't actually treat lives like lives. That's up to you. So let's say that when the enemy bullet hits the player object, it will reduce the number of lives, but let's put in a quick test. Let's say that if lives are less than one, so in other words, if they're zero, but let's say less than one, because I feel like that's a little bit safer. If they're less than one, then we will, and I'll just grab my brackets here, wherever they are, there they are, then we'll end the game. And if they are not, then I'm just going to go back to the start. So I've got a couple of possible outcomes here. So where's my end of game? I know I'm, I'm probably literally staring at There it is. End of game. So that's what's going to happen if my lives get below one. But if they don't, and this is where I want my controls, I want the else statement. Where are you else? There you are. Else, then I will do that thing. So it's basically counting the lives. And we get different outcomes depending on how many lives we've got. So let's see that work. Okay, fantastic. So there's my lives. Let's lose a few. There we go. I lost one. Let's see if I can lose another. Surprisingly hard to lose a life in this thing. There we go, down to my last life, and I closed. So that's how the live system works. Uh, good luck with it.